-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, do you think it's like, I, I don't understand why we're not getting people in the past couple of classes, like, you know, the TV class and this one. Um, maybe, I don't know, Susan can weigh in. Is it, is it too early? Like, is it, we get more people if you do it at 2 p.m.? Maybe do from 2 to 6 instead of, uh, you know, from, um, that would be, yeah, 5 to 7 Eastern. Um, but, I mean, it seems like, in my opinion, like people on the East Coast, the easier, you know, there are lots of, like, screenwriting groups stuff that happened, you know, in the mornings, right? Like um, 10 a.m. on Saturdays, on the weekends. Y yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we can... You know, maybe we can do is try, and then if we don't get enough people, we can just do the repeat the intro class until we get enough people. <laughs> you know, like I mean, because I think the rewrite, yeah, the re well, the rewrite class, it feels like we need um, uh, certain. Yeah, I think with at least three, if they're going to go through the whole class and they can trade feedback with each other, then that's each person would get two sets of notes. Um, so, yeah, uh, we can try and see. And, you know, we did get somebody from um, Twitch last time who just, he actually joined and joined the class or, you know, like joined the Discord. Right. All right, hi everybody. So we are going to run the Rewrite Bootcamp intro class right now. Um, this is a four week course that meets Saturdays 12 to two Pacific time. Um, and uh, the idea is that you go from a draft of a completed script to a more improved draft of that same completed script for a pilot or TV show um, let's take a look at what we'll be doing. And um, we also run several of these, um, we run all, all these uh, free intro classes are all streamed on Twitch, Twitter, um, and on Discord as well, and, sorry, YouTube, and also you can join us on Dis Discord if you go to scriptcamp.net slash membership, you can sign up. Um, let's take a look at what is Script Camp. We're a screenwriting community focused on helping take you from concept to uh, first draft to polished script with lots of free classes, events, and workshops with some paid classes too, VIP membership classes, boot camps, and writer's labs. So here's a little bit about me. If you do not know me already, um, I teach the boot camps and most of the courses here on, on Script Camp. Um, I uh, have been a ripped and working writer since 2017 when I first got signed after placing in the Launchpad Feature Contest Top 10. Um, have thriller skits set up in town at the moment, and I teach the boot camps and lab. So we go from first idea to a polished script in the feature bootcamp using the step-by-step -step weekly method, um, practical method, sorry, with two, these weekly meetings that are two hours long, eight weeks for feature, six weeks for TV pilots. Um, and for playwriting, which we just uh, recently added as well, that's six weeks, that meets on Saturdays right after this course. So we do four weeks for the rewrite, four weeks for the pitch bootcamp, which is on Saturdays, 11 to one for the next four weeks. So this is theoretically the schedule. We were just talking about how we might actually have to alter this a little bit if we just don't get enough signups for this one group. We might just run these, these first couple classes as like an intro to anyone who might be interested, uh, anyone who's tuning in who thinks they might want to do this. We need like a, at least a couple people to make this work because it involves this sort of peer review element wherein you will be reading and also giving uh, thorough notes to your fellow students in order to help them reach that next level of their draft. So we need a couple students. So please, if you're interested in this, do sign up. Um, if, uh, if we don't get enough, we might have to run another intro course next week. Um, week one is about giving and taking notes. 
and just about the an overview of the process and, and also just this big re-outline. So this is uh, the time when you will be working on a big, um, a new outline for your, the current version of the script that you have that reflects how it currently stands, um, not the way you want it to be. Uh, and this is going to be, be what you use as the foundation for planning your rewrite, because planning the rewrite is so important. And the learning how to rewrite is more the objective of the course than it is to have a perfect script at the end. Because no matter how many rewrites you do, it's there's always going to be a point of diminishing returns where the thing is just not really getting better and you would learn more from just writing something else. So uh, we're going to talk about how to just do rewrites and to organize them and how to approach them and create this methodology for doing rewrites that will get you from one distinct draft to the next distinct draft without having to worry about this problem of endless fiddling where you'll just be opening it up and changing little things here and there in such a way that you will never really know when you're moving from one draft to the next one. So we'll work on that re outline that reflects the current version of the script. You want to read two student scripts and provide feedback on them in between that first and second week. So you, that's theoretically we will be in groups for this, groups of at least three, where you will have two people to respond to and two people to respond to you. We will have this revision guide and um, talk about structure and pacing on the second meeting on the 23rd. That's where you're going to combine all your notes that you've gotten together and pick the ones you want and, you know, discard the ones you, you don't and use that to create this revision guide, which is like a chronological roadmap to revising the entire script. So um, weeks three and four will be when you are getting into the weeds. You are actually starting to do the, the, the rewrite. You're starting from a blank page and uh, you are copying and pasting in things from the previous draft as needed, but moreover, you are using that open space to allow yourself to the freedom to write new scenes and to kind of glue them together in a way that makes more sense for this version. So you're gonna use that revision guide to rewrite the script. Week four is polish and nailing the tone where you're gonna go through those iterations, those passes that for just elements that require one specific look, um, and you're gonna finish the rewrite by May 14th, though these dates, I guess, might be changing. Um, so how to enroll, uh, you can go to scriptcamp.net slash classes and um, you can sign up, you can buy this class on its own or you can sign up for a free trial of the monthly membership, scriptcamp.net slash membership, get all these benefits, all these classes, many different boot camps, writers labs, 70 hours of classes a month with multiple instructors and in, in uh, feature writing. We have TV writing, we have playwriting, we have rewriting, we have many different things and we're adding more. So um, you also get access to the video library, which is recordings of all the classes if you want to if you if you want to see what another class is doing or if you miss one of them we also have basic membership that is five dollars a month that gets you eight classes every single month private discord channels video library it doesn't include the lab or the camps um but uh still that's you know 16 hours of uh classes every week for just the cost of a or every month for the cost of a cup of coffee pretty good value um then we have these this coaching tier as well which is currently full um the slots but we will let you know when those become more available and you can see what that includes here um so uh boot campers also get a hundred dollars off consultations and proofreads so this is kind of a new promotion that we're doing so take a look at this if you want to see if for those who don't know coverage is like um organized uh notes responding to and just giving feedback on a draft of a script a consultation is a markup of all your pages in in and in an effort to show the things that are working and things that aren't. It's not going to be like paragraphs of written work, but it's going to be like sticky notes all throughout, and then a 30-minute voice consultation with me or or with whomever is giving you the notes that will then go over all of those things and answer any questions that you have and kind of help focus on the main points for improvement. Um, and then we have the proofread as well, which is to fix grammar, punctuation errors, markup of the pages, making sure that everything sounds more or less natural. Um, if you're a non-native speaker, this might be worth doing as well, just to make sure that this your the English is coming out as clear as it can be. And also just to identify formatting problems and whatever else might need work. So those are some new promotions to take a look at. Let's um, also bring up the Pitch Bootcamp, which starts tomorrow, four week course Sundays, 11 to one. We have guest hosts like uh, amazing writers like Scott Barkin and Connor Rowan, who will be able to help with various specialties. Connor Rowan is very much into TV. Scott Barkin is more of a feature guy like me. Um, but uh, we will have, you know, these guests who will help you get your uh, one to two minute long pitch for a feature or a TV pilot project off the ground and also just work on these skills of like how to pitch, how to communicate stories and how to convey just the key information in a very limited amount of time in this very sort of, you know, engaging and social way, which so much of screenwriting is very social and very dependent on your interpersonal communication skills and your verbal communication skills. It's not all just 
crouching in a dark attic, you know, pounding at a typewriter as the water drips from the ceiling. And, you know, it's not all just being a weird recluse by yourself. You have to interact with people. You have to get used to speaking your ideas out loud and communicating clearly and public speaking on, you know, it's not exactly public in the sense of you're in front of thousands of people, but public speaking in the sense of you're on the spot, you're quote on stage in front of, you know, small one person possibly, or maybe small groups that you have to be able to clearly communicate a vision and get everyone on board. So that is all just super important stuff that we'll be covering in the next four weeks starting tomorrow. So sign up if you want to check that out. Uh, we have this new thing called script coins. <laughs> Nacho, do you want to explain this? Um, yeah, uh, I think you have to click it one more time. So it's missing some oh, there info. We at the top. There you go. Um, yeah, so basically, um, uh, all you need to do is just, um, you know, participate in helping others, like reading scripts or log lines, giving your feedback on the Discord. You know, if you go to the log lines channel, there's lots and lots of log lines people post. They're looking for feedback. Um, there's uh, feature scripts, you know, and pilots scripts and scenes and short scripts. Just kind of look through and just read through what others have posted. When you give feedback, or when you participate in activities like our daily, um, you know, picture prompts contests and different, you know, stuff going on, uh, you get um, points. You get these script coins, and what can you do with them? Well, type dollar sign store. You can actually use them to get all this cool like merchandise. You can use it. You can get um, free like basic membership that includes like uh, eight screenwriting classes a month. Um, that's a hundred coins, you know, so you get lots of feedback, um, you know, just by participating in the server, helping others, you can get free classes and stuff. You can get a free table read of your feature or pilot script. That's a pretty big thing because, you know, it's hard to get people to commit the time to actually read through your entire script, right? That's, that's something that, um, you know, you, it just not, doesn't compare you read through a few pages here or there, like having a table read of your complete script is just gonna really help you, you know, get some good feedback on like, you know, what's working, what isn't working. Um, and you all, you can also use your coins to get unlimited membership even. So um, all kinds of cool stuff. So check it out, just, you know, type uh, dollar sign store and you can see like different stuff you can buy. Um, and just, you know, give some feedback, help people out who are looking for feedback on their scripts. Just scroll through the Discord channels and um, you'll get coins. Thanks, Nacho. So are these coins redeemable for actual gold coins? That's, I guess, a question people might have as well, right? Like they might want to get some doubloons in the mail. Is that on the table? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Not at this time, yeah. So take note, they're not redeemable Ma for bullion or currency. Uh, Maybe we'll have a souvenir coin when we reach a million subscribers. Ooh, that'd be cool to have like a commemorative coin. I have one of those that I got from Super Mario Galaxy. It's like a little coin with Mario's face on it. Um, How did you like win it? Did you did you have to beat the game or no, something? No, or? it just came with the uh, like edition of the the game somehow. I think I also have a Skyrim or what do you call it a Cyrodiil uh, like um, coin as well. <laughs> I have I have several gold coins from fictional nations such as. The we money. don't even have to make our own, our own coins. We can just use yours. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, thanks, Nacho. So, yeah, make sure to cash in your coins. Very good stuff. And, you know, it's the equivalent of the Chuck E. Cheese counter where you can buy your airheads and your Tootsie Pops. But you can also get uh, table reads and, and mouse pads and T-shirts and things. So pretty cool. All right. Um, so I don't know if we have any students uh, to tell us about their rewrite project. Let's see. Uh, oh, looks like we have a few folks in the chat. Hi, guys. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what it is that you'd like to rewrite for this course? Uh, my, uh, my name's Paul. I haven't finished anything yet, but um, when I do, I would like to, you know, rewrite it, I guess, into more than one draft. Okay, great. Awesome. So, yeah, of this is, the rewrite course is focused on taking a draft that is done and improving it until you have a, a better version. So I, I guess if you don't have anything finished, then it would be tough to do that. But, I mean, you can always just, ha like, observe the course if you want to just get, like, sort of learn how to rewrite or how to approach that. Um, how about you, Shani?
Can you hear us, Shawnee? If you've not noticed, your mic is muted, so you can turn that off by clicking the microphone icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. Okay, maybe not. Um, so we're just going to have to move ahead for now, I suppose. Uh, it seems like it's seeming like throughout this class that we may have to just leave this kind of an overview of the course for now and maybe do another intro session next week. So we'll have to adjust the calendar just because we don't have a full group or any anyone to participate at the moment. Um, but we can at least go over some of the basics here. This is uh, the way this course works is that it's four weeks to improve the draft you have into a better draft. Will it be good? Maybe or maybe not, but the point is that it's going to be in better shape than it is now, and you really have to just move beyond the idea that any draft or any script has to be good in the first place. Like, we have to untether from ideas and detach from ideas, because even in the best-case scenarios, your ideas will be bought and developed and rewritten and directed and performed, and then all of that is going to change it even more and even more. So if you're very attached to your ideas as a screenwriter, you're going to be disappointed a lot of the time. And your objective is more to become an, a generator of unlimited ideas and to develop the skills necessary to execute them consistently on a quick time frame and with a high level of quality. So that means that includes rewrites. And rewriting is just going to be the thing that moves you from the middle tier to the tier where you sort of need to be. Um, this course is not supposed to coach you into writing a great script or to rewriting a script into being great or to having a script at the end that will go anywhere or get you meetings or reps or any money or anything like that. It takes many years of writing to get to that level. Just please release from those expectations and realize this is work and takes a long time. No one starts out good at this, and this is a process that you have to learn, and it's like a methodology that you have to learn. And if you're spending more than six months on any script, you have to change up your process because it's just, uh, it like, no matter how long you spend on something, you're going to hit that point of diminishing returns where it stops getting substantially better, and you're going to improve more by moving on to something else than you would by continuing to fiddle endlessly with the same thing. So remember, it's your job to write many, many bad scripts in order to sort of get to those good ones. Um, okay, let's take a look at uh, some steps for just how to be a feature writer. Number one is always going to be you have to get really good at writing movies. Step two is going to be actually go back and do step one for real. And then you want to make a portfolio of three to five sort of unique and riveting and undeniably incredible scripts. Um, this, these first three steps, ta steps take about 10 years on average, but you have to learn many different steps of the process, including how to rewrite and how to improve your ideas as much as possible. Um, you know, three to, f three to four drafts, I would say, for the most part, when you're getting going is probably the most you should be spending, but you should kind of learn to plan those drafts and learn how to organize those rewrites before you move into them so that you're not just kind of blindly stumbling through. Um, after that, you will want to, often nowadays, you will start with a manager, um, meaning you're going to have to place highly in contests and fellowships, network extensively, and perhaps query, uh, though your queries will probably not be read unless you have high placements in contests and fellowships, or perhaps an indie film made or a big hit web series or something like that. So you can always be working on other stuff too. But the point is, you're going to have to impress somebody at some point to get read, usually, um, or get a recommendation from someone. So you know, if you know someone who knows someone, whatever leverage you can get to get read by a manager, you then have to back that up with a script that is really good, obviously. So then you work with that manager to either get a writing assignment, possibly pitching on multiple, or to just develop a spec that they can take out, which takes a really long time, and they're not going to take something out unless they love it and they feel like they helped craft it at almost every step of the way. For the most part, they're almost never going to actually want to go out with the script that they signed you off of. And pretty much on all examples I've seen, they don't even care about anything that you have in your portfolio once you sign with them. They want you to start fresh and do what they want you to do. So you've got to just kind of do what they want for a while. You're going to take general meetings, then specific meetings on a script, and work with producers and other players to develop a spec or assignment even more, and do a bunch of rewrites for free, and do a lot of um, pitching for free, and just so much free work. There's a, actually a really big gap between first getting signed and usually first making money. It like can be an additional several years. So you do the preceding steps about 500 billion times as various projects fall apart until finally, eventually, you get something sold or produced and you know join the Writers Guild and drink champagne until you die. Um, but uh, you know this whole process all over can take 10 plus years easily. Um, getting staffed as a TV writer is a little bit of its own um, challenges. Uh, so this is, you know, there's several different ways you can do this. One track is by starting as a writer's PA, which you, in case you pretty much physically have to be in LA. That's changed a little bit due to the pandemic, but it's sort of trending back towards in-person. 
Um, you have to spend several years working through that assistant track, and I really just won't be able to help you a ton with that, though we have co-hosts who might be able to help you more. The other track is just get really, really good at writing pilots, as well as other things like plays or stand-up or books or web series or features or making indie films or things like that to build out your portfolio and get attention and stand out. But there's, there's really no point in getting meetings if you're not already a fantastic TV writer, so you have to just be working on pilots in your own time, writing script after script. You're then going to get a manager in a so somewhat similar way to the one I just described for features, then have your manager submit your portfolio during staffing season, and then once you nail those staffing meetings, theoretically you can get a junior level staff writing job on a, on a team. So, a lot of steps involved, and it's really difficult for a bunch of reasons. The, one of the major ones is that just getting feedback is really hard. It's tough to gauge where your skill level is and where it needs to be and what you need to do to improve. And a script is just a long document that it's difficult to discern the quality of from just a quick glance through it. So it requires a certain amount of attention and trust from the person that you're asking to read it, that they're going to be in good hands and not have their time wasted. And moreover, just 95% of scripts are not any good at all. Even pro work, you'd be surprised. Like, even stuff that is going around, like, a lot of it is not that good. Um, and it's really hard to write a good script. So people who don't read them usually just want to sort of support you and don't know how to help you. And they don't know what to look for or how to analyze a story. Whereas people who do read lots of scripts and do know how to analyze stories rarely want to do so in their free time. They often charge money for coverage. And it's just hard to find groups of these people and keep them going. So why would you want to write a screenplay? The answers might be because you want to be a professional screenwriter. Because you want to just become more skilled at this. You might want to direct the movie yourself. Or you just want to do this as a hobby for personal enjoyment. Um, the things that we sometimes hear are that... I want to write just this one movie and get just this one movie made, which is not really a thing unless you're making it yourself or paying for it or directing it yourself. If you want to write professionally for a living, you will have to write many, many, many scripts with almost no exceptions. Um, yeah, and don't really worry way too much about if any individual one is good. Um, a bricklayer doesn't really care that much. If any brick is a masterpiece, you have a road to get working on, so you just need to go. Okay, so rewrite in four weeks t uh, consists of these steps. We have re-outline, notes document, revision guide, rewrite, and then these extra passes, which we'll go more into some more detail on all of these. Um, but first, let's go into the ground rules first. So the TV pilot or feature should be ready for to share for feedback by the first week of class. Now, um, given a couple factors that we've discussed, we might be pushing this date back. So um, the upcoming uh, first week of class is not actually accurately reflected on here. We might have to update you there. Um, but in any case, get used to sharing the uh, sharing your ideas with your fellow students and with me and with everyone, even at these early stages, even though it's just a first draft. Yeah, I know it can be difficult to hear these big notes at the early steps, but it's just important that you get used to that idea, especially if you want to work in TV. So use your real name or anything that is a real name instead of a username. Um, I don't. I still think we maybe just don't have a full enough group to answer the discussion questions, so I'll just move through these for now and just focus on the basics here. Um, so um, from doing this on your own scripts, that's one matter, but you can also, as a pro writer, you can be doing rewrites uh, as part of your job, as part of you know how you make make a living doing this. Um, so you'll be rewriting other people's stuff, um, sometimes for credit and sometimes not. It, you might call it so, sort of like ghostwriting at certain points, and like you can negotiate for certain types of credits, but you're not guaranteed to have your name on the movie at all. Um, and not the non-Writers Guild signatory world, the non-WGA movies, there's really not that many rules, and they can pay you almost anything they want for this, and it's just up to you to negotiate. And to keep your quote in mind, the quote being the last amount that you were paid, and um, just... Uh, Try to negotiate for hire the next time and use these recommendations based on the smaller gigs that you've gotten to hopefully get a better one next and a better one next. And this is not an amazing way to make a living until you are in the guild. But this is something that I do, and this is you know a, an important part of being a screenwriter is learning how to rewrite other people's material as well. If you're working on a TV show, for instance, it's all very collaborative, and you need to be able to not only rewrite your own stuff, but take ideas that others have given you and incisely diagnose the problems in that material and be able to find solutions and quickly, you know, combine scenes and clarify the emotional point of scenes and move things around and stick things back together and just come out with a better version of the document that you were given. So super essential that you not only focus on rewriting your own stuff, but be thinking like, oh, every idea that I see and every bit of feedback that I give, I'm trying to essentially help other people rewrite their thing if I'm not rewriting it entirely. So you need to be working on this skill of giving and receiving notes, which is th these things are skills. 
Um, communicating is just so, so, so important in screenwriting, whether that's your own ideas or the things that might be flaws or shortcomings in other people's ideas. You need to be able to communicate those in a way that is like, you know, non-hostile and respectful and polite and all these things, um, but also gets to the heart of the problem and helps even some, sometimes you might have to kind of justify or make a case for yourself or kind of argue with the producers that your vision is sort of better and you need to do that in such a way that doesn't make people mad at you and is instead a way of showing that no you have a new navigator at the helm and that you might be blind to certain issues in this because you have been with this material for so long keeping in mind that producers might have been rewriting something for up to you know years and years with many different writers um i've rewritten something that had five different writers on it i have to read through every single draft and keep the characters consistent and and find the scenes that are working and the, find the things that aren't and, and and like peel it apart and tape it and staple it back together just the best possible version of this new script so it it sounds challenging because it is um and you're not likely to get these jobs doing this until you've already proven yourself as a very competent writer in your own right um but uh regardless um this is a valid way to make money and to get work taking other people's stuff and you know some people say it's called script doctoring but really it's not called script doctoring and people who do this are not called script doctors they're called writers <laughs> uh so script doctor is not really a term that is used in hollywood very much although uh, you might get the idea sort of from the wording there of what it actually is which is taking someone else's work and just you know make helping it heal moving it moving it um up in terms of quality and just improving it as much as you can so that is a valid path uh, through this career. Um, you can you could be someone who even specializes in just these rewrites and polishes and things like that. Um, and uh, there's always going to be a demand for it. So you're going to have to make a re-outline as you go through this course, which is going to be a list of every single scene in your current script. Which not what you planned, but how it ended up on the page, just to make sure that you have an accurate bird's eye view of the entire story. So you can just, you have to describe in a few sentences each just exactly what's happening in each scene, probably one or two sentences max. This re-outline is really essential because this is the foundation for everything else you do. And also, if you're going to be working with other people, like, for instance, I just mentioned producers or managers or things like that, you have to be able to summarize the story in a way that they can just read it in a page or two and understand the entire thing. So get used to the idea of writing this in a way that other people might be able to understand it, even though you can use a little bit of shorthand and stuff. Like, keep in mind... It's good to know how to do this in such a way that someone else would be able to read and, you know, understand that document. So um, you don't have to do this now because we're probably, again, moving the class forward a little bit. But if this class were starting now, you could theoretically create your re-outline, which would be a brand new document. And we're going to be using Google Docs in this class whenever possible. Um, but some kind of word processor, if you really want. Though keep in mind, we only do accept either Google Docs or PDF links in the class um, chats. So you're going to title that re-outline at the top, include your title, genre, logline, and comps. Comps being the two things that you can compare your script to, to other movies in a similar sort of genre or vein that might suggest the world of this and the, with its style or tone of that. Things like that just help clarify what you're going for. What goes in the re-outline is a truncated version of every single scene in the script that represents the version that you have, even if it's bad, even if you know that some things need to change, don't leave anything out. You want to describe what happens in just a sentence or two each, and you can include page counts on here if you think that you will need to kind of keep that more in mind. Um, and make sure that this is something you can share with other people if you need to, so it shouldn't be written entirely in just sort of personal, illegible shorthand. Um, if your script has major structural problems, you might also have to write out the story beat summary, which is going to be these bulleted lists of the key moments in the protagonist's journey that are sort of summarized in what we go over in story structure. So you're going to know where the act breaks are, you're going to know where the midpoint is, you're going to know where, um, you know, the all the all the important linchpins of a script will go. You're going to use that to identify or to sorry, to examine your story at a glance and being able to identify problems, see what's working and see what's not and clearly mark it up so you'll know what to do. So um, we just talked about this. Um, you can. Oh, this is a different document. You'll have to create also the notes document, which is going to be um, where you're going to be collecting all the notes that you get. Now, you can give or receive notes in this class in two different ways. One is by either giving a minimum one full typed out page of notes for feedback for your peer script. Um, alternatively, you can schedule a time to call them either on the phone or on, on Discord. would probably be the easiest way. Um, and through that, you can give them enough that they can write down the notes themselves. 
um, for at least a page. So that would probably be, I don't know, 20 minutes-ish on a phone call to discuss your thoughts, what's working and what's not working. Um, so those are the options. And you want to make sure you aggregate all the notes and feedback you've received into this one document. You can you know, separate it out by sections depending on who the person providing the notes in each section. You're going to look for similarities between those notes and possibly highlight them if that's easier for you. And always be looking for this note behind the note, which might be something that the, the writer is, or that the feedback provider is sort of getting at or hinting at, and they themselves may not actually fully know how to articulate it. But you have to always be looking for what is the intention behind why they're giving that note and what bigger problems might that be suggesting. Um, so you're going to want to put these in either chronological order or order of importance, like biggest importance to smallest importance. I think chronological order is usually just the, still the easiest way to do this. Um, decide which notes you want to incorporate into your new draft. You don't have to include everything, but if something is coming up multiple times and in common between different sets of completely different feedback providers, chances are there's something there that needs to be looked at. Okay. The <clears throat> last pre-writing document that you'll be making is the revision guide, which is a com combination of the two documents that we just talked about you making. Remember the first one being the re-outline. That's just a bird's eye view of the entire script, a sentence for every scene. The next thing is a notes document, which is all the things that you should probably think about changing. You're then going to make a copy of the um, re-outline so that you have the blank version untouched on its own. And you're going to drag, click, you know, highlight and drag in the notes that you want to change in the appropriate spot on the re-outline so you know where those things need to go. Um, and after you've completed it, you only do this after you've completed the re-outline and aggregated all the notes. You're going to sort of just, we call it, mashing them together into a new document. And you're going to use that as this roadmap for the reconstruction of the rest of your story. So then from there, you will start with a brand new script file on just blank page one. You can export your old script in HTML or TXT format or something like that. It's a little easier to copy the text over than it is in PDF. And then you can click and copy, you know, highlight and copy over scenes from the previous draft as needed. But that shouldn't be your default approach. And this just allows you a little more freedom and a little more mental space to write new scenes, to connect scenes in a different way, and just to make this new version stand on its own. You're going to update your revision guide, color coding it to reflect your progress on the new draft as you go, marking it up with green highlights, meaning that's finished, that's done, that's in place, that doesn't need any more work. Yellow will mean that's in progress or that still requires another look. And red meaning I'm going to cut that. And by the time you get to that in the in the, working your way through the, re, the revision guide, you should just probably cut it. Um, so by the end of the draft, you should have deleted the red sections. Um, so that's followed by final passes, which is what we cover in our last class here. These are the individual passes that require their own look through. So that might be um, just one character that requires their own pass, or just the dialogue in general, or maybe just the action, or maybe you might have to be applying this principle of clarity, brevity, and voice all throughout. Or you might have a character um, arc that isn't quite connecting, or the tone might seem off. Um, you want to just keep make sure you're reading pro scripts to get a sense of what scripts should feel like and how to be approaching these rewrites so that we are making the most professional piece of work you possibly can. It's absolutely essential that you continue to read pro scripts at least one minimum every single week, whether or not you're doing this boot camp or any other. You need to know what professional lo work looks and feels like. You need to build up this patience and tolerance for reading. And to become a good writer, you must become a masterful reader. In every class, we'll ask you, what is a pro what pro script did you read this week? What did you think about it? It's not a test. And it's not to trick you, it's just to keep you reading and to keep thinking critically about what's working and what's not and take notes on what's working in the scripts that you're reading and things that you notice or you're like, oh, I didn't realize you could do that on the page. Um, always be reading. You must always be reading. How do you know when it's done? Um, there's not really one answer to this. Um, you can look at the script and assess honestly if you think that every note has been addressed. If so, you might send it out to someone new to get one more read. It's usually, you're gonna hit a point of diminishing returns to have the same readers again and again and again, just because they're gonna be kind of used to it before and they're not really gonna be able to mimic that experience of watching it for, or reading it for the first time, which is usually a little bit valuable and worth conserving in your readership. So you maybe find someone whom you trust, but who, whom you have not already sent it to, send it out for another read, um, see how it goes. Repeat this until the notes you're getting are not, you don't think going to improve it anymore. And that's usually gonna be between three and five drafts. If you're doing more than six or seven though, and you're not being paid and you're not doing this with a manager to, to take it out, you probably need to stop and you need to move on and maybe come back to it later or maybe don't, but you're going to learn more by writing something new than by fiddling with something that is almost done endlessly. 
Um, okay, so looks like we have a few people here. Are there any questions um, on the rewrite process based on what we've talked about so far? Okay, no questions. Uh, let's move on. Um, oh, I was wondering, um, so like, how do you know when you're like, uh, how do you know why your dialogue isn't working in the rewrite process? Because, like, if you're trying to rewrite um, the dialogue in a section of the, in one of the scenes of the movie, um, and it's just, like, not working. Well, there's all kinds of reasons that dialogue might not be working, and, and that's why it's essential to try to give as good feedback as possible so that the people you're giving feedback to will be encouraged to give you the best feedback possible which might not just be this isn't working but it might include some you know uh, assessment of the problem as to why so you need to try to make sure you're getting honest reads and good readers who can actually analyze and who can tell you like why they think it's not working because there's all kind uh, there's all kinds of reasons why one it might not be dramatic enough it might feel too sort of mundane it might feel like you're sort of spinning your wheels or wasting time in the scenes and you might need to cut down on it significantly there might not be enough of it, and it might feel like your scenes are sort of like your characters are reaching certain revelations and certain emotional moments without the adequate interactions to build up to those scenes. So there's like 9,000 different things that, that could be wrong, and you kind of have to like just look at the notes that you've gotten and, and do your best to assess what is the consistent issue that I see from note to note to note. So if, if you get notes from one person that says, uh, this dialogue felt too overwritten and too flowery in this section from this character, and somebody else says, I felt that the same from this character in this part, then that might be something that you might need to look at all throughout. And you might need to say, oh, I need to go through and check every line to make sure I'm not overwriting all of it. Um, so yeah, there's like, it's sort of like asking, how do I fix what's wrong with my car? Uh, there's like a million things that could be wrong with your car. Um, and, or like, you know, I, 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 I'm coughing, what am I sick with, right? Um, well, you could be sick with a fever or pneumonia or, you know, COVID or, or anything. Um, you need, that's why you're, you're going to really just be, um, you have to write a lot in order to get better at assessing the problems in your own work, and you need to read a lot. Um, I know I mentioned that before, but if you're not reading lots of pro work, then you're not going to know what the good stuff looks like, and it's going to be more difficult to tell if you're measuring up to it or not. So I realize that's a couple different answers. The answer is sort of like, there's a million things. You need to just um, do this enough and practice doing this enough that you can assess the problems and diagnose the problems based on the notes that you're getting, even if the notes aren't like able to specifically tell you everything that, like you're gonna be getting notes from amateurs sometimes. And even in the pro world, you're gonna be getting notes from people who themselves are not writers and don't always know the best way to tell you specifically what's wrong. So it's like diagnosing problems based on the notes is a skill that requires practice. Does that answer that question? I realized that was a long answer. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I get it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank do you. Do this a lot, basically, is the, the, the best answer for how to, how to get better at doing that. Um, okay, so uh, let's... Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on. Um, so if how if you've already chosen the thing that you are thinking about rewriting, you can post it in the chat. I don't think do we have anyone in the chat who has something they want to theoretically rewrite? Voices. I haven't finished the rewrite on that one. Oh, you have not finished the rewrite, but you you got notes on it. Uh, no, I haven't. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Nacho's got one. Great. Okay, and this is a supernatural horror thriller script. Um, that you wrote in the first feature boot camp, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So there you go. We try to we'll try to match people up with the similar tone and genre, so that if you you know if you only like um, comedy and romance movies, they're not going to make force you to read someone's body horror, you know, mutant slayer action script or whatever it is. Um, but if we don't get enough students, it can it gets more difficult to try to match them up. So we you know. Get your friends to sign up <laughs> if you can. I mean, we have a referral. If you get a friend to sign up and refer them, then they get a discount, and you get a free month of unlimited membership. So it might be something to think about if you're like, oh, I want to do this course, but not enough people are signing up to give me good notes. Um, maybe recruit your friends would be my recommendation. Anyone else have a script they want to rewrite? Okay. 
Okay, maybe not yet. So we're we got to reassess this class a little bit, and um, Nacho and I will be reworking this and I guess announcing soon what the changes will be to how this is working because we just don't have a big enough group to start right now. Um, but if you're watching on one of our streaming places, then go to scriptcamp.net and you can sign up. And um, by you know we just need a few people to make the class work and make it go. So um, please sign up if this sounds at all interesting to you. Um, your assignment is to sign up if you haven't, but also to just be working on the thing that you want to rewrite to try to finish it and make it as good as it can possibly be before you first turn it in. And that just comes down to the basic respect that you're showing someone of whom you were asking for several hours of their time and a lot of mental effort in order to read and assess the problems in your script and write up what those issues might be. That's asking a lot of someone and you need to show them that you value that time by making the version that you turn into them as good as possible. Meaning no typos, meaning no placeholders, meaning no big holes in the story or formatting problems. It's okay if you're still learning and aren't sure if all those things are going to be perfect, but just do your absolute best to make that person not waste their time and not make it a horrible slog for them to get through your work. You need to do, you need to put the work in to make that as good as possible to help that person get through it. And keep in mind, like, even if you do that, your first couple of scripts are not going to be that good. So do what you can to make it painless. Also read at least one feature script for the blacklist or to pilot, depending on what you're writing. Um, if you're writing a, if you're rewriting a feature, you must read a professional feature off the blacklist. If you're writing a pilot, you must read a pro pilot off of, we have a, a site directory that you can link you to for pilots as well. And be ready to talk, talk about them. Just answer, what is it? What was the story? What did you like? What did you learn? Basic stuff like that. It's not a trap. It's not a trick quiz. It's just going to be, what did you read? What did you learn? Um, yeah, I mentioned this. Keep reading, ideally, I say three scripts a week. You can get away with one if you just do not have the time or absolutely cannot make more, but one should be the minimum. Okay, well, we'll look at what else is going on in, in um, script camp today or coming up. We have uh, playwriting after this from 2 to 4 Pacific time um, with Morgan. There's three sessions of that left, so you can still hop in and join, even though you might be a little behind on the specific goals and skills that she's been working on in the class. We also have um, feature boot camp three, Intro class is starting April 15th. That's a brand new session of the bread and butter class of this camp, the thing that I specialize in and teach absolutely best. Feature boot camp, if you do not, if you want to learn to write movies, what, no matter your skill level, that is where you should be. Um, this rewrite boot camp, we'll have to reassess the dates on. Um, we have workshops and classes Wednesday and Thursday, 4 to 7. Table reads Sunday at 4, so that's also today. You can bring up to five pages of a script and have them read by the group and get feedback on them. And also today we have the lab that's at four from four o'clock to six o'clock Pacific, um, where you can come in with whatever problems you have, whatever scripts you're working on, pages, outlines, or questions, or just topics you want to hear more about, and get specific one-on-one -on -one help with those. All right, um, what else? Uh, here's the upcoming weekday classes. We have endings on Wednesday, Thursday, the twentieth and twenty-first with characters. Words on paper is one that I think our students have gotten a lot of value from. If you're just not sure how to arrange words on the page or you're not quite sure if your prose is up to snuff in terms of clarity brevity and voice that is where to go there will be exercises to just help you improve your sentence by sentence construction um and if you're finding that to be a problem that's that is that might help you um copyright and clearance on wednesday 11th and 12th the breaking the story um so figuring out you know the outline and, and the very early pre-writing steps 18th and 19th with scene class 25th and 26th the beginning of the story, first and second of, um, what is that, June? No, May, January, February, March, April. No, that is June. Wow, this year has flown by. Um, and then on the 8th and 9th, we have outlining parts 1 and 2. Uh, so this schedule is now, the dates are will be different, but this is the order of things that we're doing in the rewrite class. So if you're wondering how this class works, there's that overview once more. Um, it's a four-week, four different meetings, meaning that you have until the end of the week that follows the final meeting so essentially five weeks to rewrite a script which is about what you would get in the professional world so you remember you can buy the class on its own scriptcamp.net slash classes or you can go to scriptcamp.net slash membership to get your free trial for your 49 dollars unlimited membership that gets you access to everything we do here 70 hours plus of classes every single month so you can click the plus emoji in chat to get access to those channels if you have not signed up yet but would like to um, here's our breakdown again of what the membership tiers do, but I went over that at the beginning. And um, again, the consultation and proofread promotion that we're doing here, some, some useful info. 
All right, um, Pitch Bootcamp also tomorrow, 11 to 1, we have this amazing new course that you're really going to want to attend if you have, you just need a log line and like a one to two minute version of your story. It could be something you've written, it could be something you have not written yet but are curious about writing or you might want to write at some point and we can help you both assess the problems in that story and also how you're delivering and communicating that story because communicating stories is a huge part of what we have to do. So many guest hosts, Sundays 11 to 1 for the next four weeks. We also have free shirts, so message Nacho with your size and address if you want one of these t-shirts. We also have script coins, which we mentioned at the beginning. Type dollar sign store in the chat on Discord and you can find much more info there. You can get prizes and um, even get free membership if you get enough points. Um, and lab is today at four to six. Again, come by questions or topics you wanna to hear more about and get help with whatever you need one-on-one. -on -one. Refer a friend, they will get a discount. You will get a free month. You can do this as many times as you want. All right, that's the end of our presentation. Let me just check if we have any more questions or things that we can help anyone with that is here. Anything you guys want to know? Um, where do we find the, the professional scripts again? Uh, um, so if you're looking for features, yep, there's the blacklist. Thanks, Nacho. In the chat for the rewrite class on the left-hand side of your screen, just scroll down and make sure that you're in rewrite chat, and you can see we've just linked, like, probably 200 plus pro scripts from the past 10 years. Um, these are from the oh, thank you. Sure, yeah, these are blacklist scripts, meaning that some of them I've produced, some of them are not, um, but uh, they're sort of like the most liked scripts of any given year that go around town. Um, and then if you're looking for a pilot, do so we have a pilot link to Nacho? Oh, maybe I not. guess not. <laughs> I thought we did. That's okay. Well, I tried it. We have a we have a link um, for that too, where you can just find a directory. It's a Google group. Um, that's hard to say. Google group. It is a Google group that has just many different, you know, comedy, drama, pilots, um, UK, US, um, just a massive directory to choose from. There they are. Thank you. Other questions. All right, I guess that's going to end our class then for today. This was just a sort of preview intro for the kind of stuff that we do in the rewrite course. So if you're interested in doing this, we need a few more people before we can get it up and running. So refer your friends, tell people, ask people to come by and join. Remember, you get two weeks free trial if you sign up. That's two, the first two meetings, the first half of this course. Um, so make sure that you are bringing people in if you want to um, you know, grow the numbers and uh, help us out. So um, let us know if you have any other questions in the meantime. I am uh, Connor K on our Discord and Nacho, our co-founder, um, also can answer the questions that you guys have. So after this, remember we have playwriting that starts at two o'clock Pacific. Then we have lab right after that from four to six. All right, well, we hope to see you guys at something soon. Um, thanks for coming by Script Camp.